Hey guys. Okay, so just a quick heads up, that red microphone that I'm holding, I lost the SD card for once I got back from LA, so I actually don't have the audio for this vlog, but the portion of this vlog in which we are at Guitar Center is pretty quick. So I'm gonna have on-screen subtitles for you, and then this part of the video is gonna be over pretty quick and we can get on with actually hearing what's going on. Sorry about that, I hope you all enjoy. What's going on? So we're doing a vlog video. Today is the last day of camp. Uh, I don't have all my, I'm not at home, I'm in LA, so I don't have all of my camera gear, so this is gonna be a little bit of a rougher video, but here's the idea. We're hanging out at the Guitar Center before we go to dinner, and we're looking at snares, and we came across this guy. So this is a, a Tama Woodworks Poplar snare drum. And the thing about it that we like is that it's 100 bucks. So the idea is, we're gonna pick up this snare drum. It's a 14 by eight, so it's pretty massive. We're gonna pick it up, we're gonna go to dinner, but after dinner, then we're gonna head back to the studio, and we're gonna slap some new heads on it, tune it up best we can, and take you through bringing the snare to life as best we can. So, that's the plan, we'll catch you in a sec. Definitely not the black drum. Try this one. What is it? It's a heavyweight. Do it. Yeah. All right. Are you gonna be standing up or sitting down? I'm standing. All right. What's up, dudes? Back at the studio, studio being this room with the drum set in it, that's all you really need in a studio. We're gonna strip the heads. There's just stock heads on this guy right now. Tama, strongest name in drums. And we're gonna put the new heads on, then we're gonna tune it up. We got pure sound snare wire, we got a fresh pack of moon gels, and then we have the two Evans heads from earlier this evening, the uh, snare side 300, and we're using as a batter head the Evans heavyweight, which I believe is dotted. Yes, it is dotted. I don't know, looking at this snare, like, I feel like I might be able to get a decent tone out of it. Not sure about the wood, though. Poplar is known for its unique name and <laughs> resilient wood grip. This is the part that gets, like, time lapse. I've always wanted to play 14 by 8 I didn't think the first time I'd be doing it would be on a $100 snare. A whole 100 Looking at it, it doesn't look too bad. Getting up close looks kind of bad. Screwing in these lugs feels really bad. Just a little sticky. And like the threads just aren't very true. Kind of wobbly. Hey do see what we can get out of this. He should honestly put this head on his DW snare after this. Give it a shot. Is it is the snare 14? Yeah. yeah. We could have tuned it with the with the stock heads to see, but like, yeah, it was just I think that the really goal like is to figure out if that hundred dollars snare sounds good. Oh, I just meant like we could have tuned tuned it with the stock head and then we had it to compare. Right. Hair, but yeah, forget about it. So batter heads on. Evans heavyweight with the dot. I guess a dot, oh, like a crop circle of a dot. Uh, now we're gonna do resonance resonance head. That poplar particle board. Resonance head up. I don't know what's going on with this slug. I might have cross threaded it. It feels kind of weird. Oh wow, is it bent? Is that why? That's why it's a hundred dollar snare because that lug is clearly crooked. So that's why it's kind of uh -huh. behaving weird. You can see how it's wobbling around there. Oh, that looks disgusting. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. 
It's not the only crooked one either. I was trying to find like the Poplar Wood Wikipedia page to read some like good stuff on it. Very durable, uh, the multi-use wood that has no specific odor, no specific wood grain. It's rarely used for appearance, but it is, you know, moderately resilient to mold and insect damage. So like. Those are pros, those are positives. <laughs> I need something that's at, at bare minimum moderately resilient. I get so many, so many questions about tuning snares and how I tune my snares. So the first thing you're gonna do is tighten all of these as tight as you can go, really wrench on it with your fingers. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna give the head a starting point for all of these lugs. So we're just going here, we're just tightening it as far as I can go. This one's kind of weird because this is the bent one. See like if you look here, you can kind of see how it's wrinkling on this lug. It's wrinkling on that lug because it's not nearly as tight as the others just because like I can't finger tighten a bent lug. So we're gonna get all these finger tight and then we're gonna start tuning. Okay, so all of them are finger tight. This is how I do it. I'm just gonna put my finger on the starting position to remember where I started and then move around the kit or move around the lugs. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do one, one half turn. Uh, and then we're gonna actually go up at least. We're gonna go up for sure one full turn on all the lugs, but we're gonna do it half turn at a time. I'm gonna take the key like that, and I'm gonna remember the starting position of where, and then have one half turn around. And that's it for now. Keep in mind, like, this is a $100 snare. On a real snare, that's more important, I guess, just because it's gonna sound better if you do it sort of one half at a time. You kinda wanna bring up the tension on all the lugs evenly as you bring it up. So I'm gonna start here on this lug. I just did it one half turn. I'm gonna go opposite side, right over to here. And now I'm gonna do the same thing, one half. And now what I do is, the next thing I'm gonna do is, I started here, then I went to here, now I'm gonna go there, and one half. Then we're gonna go, so I started here, went to here, went to there, now we're gonna go here. Okay, so let me bring it here, one half. Now I'm gonna go to here, 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 and then there, okay? Now we're gonna do another half. So we're gonna go one half. Then I always just put my finger on here for at least the first couple because I have a really hard time with forgetting for some reason. So now the next one I'm gonna go to is here. And now we're just gonna check that all the lugs are around the same pitch. Yeah, we have some discrepancies for sure. It's hard teaching tuning on a, such a shitty snare, but we've got some discrepancies. We're just gonna iron those out. All right, so this side, the first thing we're gonna do, same as the bottom, same as the resonance head, just, I'm gonna go by hand. I already kind of did that before I flipped it over. So I'm just making sure that they're all as tight, and they are all as tight as they can get. Now we're gonna do it um, one half turn, all the way around, same thing. I use Pure Sound too, but I get the ones with the belt. Yeah, I think. Like those, that? What do those come with? They may have came with a belt, I just prefer to use a string. Oh yeah, it's in there. Well, we can use a string, you can show me. Although, have you seen how the belt works on mm -hmm. this? No, it didn't come with it, it just came with this. Oh, yeah, just string. Nylon. So I got Taylor putting on the snare wire because I've never put on a snare wire with uh, a string before, and Taylor prefers string. What are we doing here, Taylor? So the holes on either side of where the tape or the ribbon usually goes through, you just feed the string through and then feed it through. So I don't know if you saw what I did. The strings came out the top originally, then we looped them around back to the outside of the bar to the other side of the lug nut. So now they're basically forming a loop around each lug nut, giving you two points of contact to hold tension. Now if you want to go really crazy, oh, look at this. you can tie these. But we're gonna see if this slips first before I do lock that in, because that knot will be pretty permanent. Although we do have other strings. I'm actually surprised. Like it doesn't sound good, but if for a hundred dollars. Like that's service school. Yeah, hundred percent. Like you could take that to a gig. The house guy's gonna hate you a little bit, but. Oh, this wasn't even recording that whole time. We'll get some more footage of me playing. Damn, I'm so tired. I'm gonna buy one of those pillows, you know, the wraparound things. I'm buy doing it this time. Neck pillows. Because, like, I think, I'm pretty sure they rip you off at the airport. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's like. Oh, yeah, baby. So now the question is, did I go too much slack out of them? Yeah. Dude, this thing's a little janky. I'm so surprised that a snare that's 100 bucks comes in at 
14 by 8 config. Like, I think that's what was happening more than anything. Janky AF. I like the strings. I think we're using strings on my own coop. Like on a real snare, you just get it better. So this is actually a pretty cool trick. If you tighten too much and you, you've kind of like lost all your slack here, if you loosen these just a, like an easy tiny bit and then pull, like engage the tension, it'll start to inch out the strings just a little bit so that you get an even pull until you get to the point where you're... So every time I do that, it's pulling the strings out just a little bit. This one more, because now it's not right there. Troubleshooting wise, this is probably the first place you should check on your snare if you're getting like a lot of buzzing that you can't, yeah. And uh, you're not getting that kind of quick response that you that the snare should be giving you is there's probably something wrong with the wires or the way that they're set up. So that's much better. We're not getting any kind of like buzzing or much better. There you go, Pierce it. Tama, hundred dollar snare. What's the name of the video? Wrong snare, right tuning. <laughs> Wrong snare, right tuning. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. That's what we wrote down. Yeah. Wrong snare, right tuning. I hope you enjoyed.